Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Starting with verse number 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people the prisoner whom they would, whom they would, yes. the people's choice. And they had then a noble or a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? He gave the people a choice. Yes. Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And that was the Jews, as we all know, that delivered him to Pilate. When he was sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Amen. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? Amen. They said, Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they said, Let him be crucified. This is not a political sermon. It may be interpreted that way, but I would like to bring something out concerning Scripture that I believe applies to our current political situation in the United States today. Amen. Just a little history that we all are familiar with anyway. In 120 B.C., John Hyrcanus, who was a Jewish zealot, goes over to Edom, just east of the Jordan River, south of Jerusalem, and he conquers the Edomites, and they adopt Judaism as their religion, and the men are circumcised. And among the families that were converted was the Herod family. And the father, Antipater, he was a powerful man. And then his son, Herod, uh, which is a title, he was on the throne when Jesus was born. And we know his attitude towards anyone that was a threat to him because he said after he got word from the wise men that this baby that is born born a king I must get rid of him. Mm -hmm. Now we know that Jesus was growing up he was not an infant at that time but a small boy possibly two years old or a little younger and Herod says, well, I'll just kill all the children, all the males, two years old and under. Make sure I get him. Yeah. Now, in 6 AD, after Christ was born, this was a time after Jesus was born, of course, in 6 A.D., Galilee was made a Roman province. There were three Roman provinces, Judah to the south, or Judea, Samaria in the middle, and Galilee to the north. 
And Rome made Galilee a province in 6 AD. And the people did not like it. Rome was oppressive. It raised taxes. And you notice that when any imperial power takes over an area or a people, they usurp their own laws and they raise taxes. That just seems to be one of the diseases of every leader. Nothing new. It's incurable. We must raise taxes. We have expenses to pay. And you know, even in the little town that we live in, when I go to post office, you see, you know, you pass City Hall, you see all these cars, you know, marked city property. These big buildings, and trucks, and I'm thinking, you know, well, does it require all that to operate a little town? Yeah. <laughs> and it's that way everywhere. Yeah. So there were some men in Galilee, and the leader was Judah the Galilean. He became known as Judah the Galilean. He says, we are going to institute an insurrection. We are going to not just, they can't overthrow Rome, but they want Rome to release that province of Galilee back to the people. So that's where Barabbas comes in. Because as we read the different accounts of Barabbas, he was called a robber. He was involved in an insurrection, and that's the insurrection that he was involved in, was to overthrow the authority of the Roman government in Galilee. And in the insurrection, he killed a man, so he was a murderer. So he was being tried the same time that Jesus was. And these zealots, Jewish zealots, what we would call patriots today. Right. Now I'm going to use this phrase. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make Judea or Judah great again. <laughs> yeah. Parallel. That was their purpose. We're going to overthrow this oppressive, high taxation government and make Judea great again. They were probably even thinking, we want to make the united tribes so of King David great again. We want to bring back those days. So here's Jesus, here's Barabbas, and now Pilate is on the throne. He was the governor of Judea. Now there was a Herod, one of the descendants of the original Herod family, up in Galilee. But here the scene takes place in Judea, in Jerusalem. And Pilate gives the people a choice. Who do you want? Now Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Now we know what he meant. He didn't mean my kingdom's not going to be on this planet. But my kingdom is not established by worldly means. My kingdom is not going to be established by military force. But here's Barabbas over here. His method of making Judah great again 
was by military force and violence in the streets. So here we have a choice that the people are given. Now there's Pharisees, scribes, doctors of the law. They knew the Old Testament. They were not stupid men. They were not uninformed as far as the law of God in the Old Testament. But they made a choice to incite the people, choose Barabbas to the one to be released and not Jesus. Give us Barabbas. Give us the man that has the carnal means to bring about a restoration of Judah and to overthrow and to drain the swamp of Rome. <laughs> and now, here's my application. The Christian right now, if, if you disagree with me, that's fine. But I have been trying to follow the emphasis the theological and the political justification of the Christian right in America. They want to make America great again by the Barabbas method. They want to make America great again by political action. And folks, it's not going to happen. Amen. They didn't want this Jesus because his methods are long range. His methods are spiritual, totally different than the one that Judah the Galilean and Barabbas and his co-patriots, maybe if we get this man, Jesus, crucified, get him out of the way, we've got this man, Barabbas, and his fellow patriots, they will make Judah great again. But as we see, the zealots continued. These patriots were involved in a lot of violence. If you study that period of history, they were in, in, involved in a lot of activity against Rome. Yes. And it finally came to a head in 70 AD. So the, what the people, the masses of the people chose at the cruci or the trial of Jesus Christ, what they chose, they figured we have got the we, we've got everything on our side now Jesus is out of the way we've got a man that will lead us into greatness but 40 years later it all came to a head it backfired on Barabbas and his company and the whole thing came tumbling down Amen. The people of that day, if you read the Gospels closely, when Jesus turned or when Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish and he fed the 5,000 plus people, what was the response of the people? We can make this man king. That's what they wanted. They wanted carnal benefits out of Jesus Christ. We can make this man king. Because the people, whether they were Edomites of that day, 
or whether they were true Judahites and a mixture of the other Israelite tribes among the people. The common people hated Rome. They wanted to drain the swamp. And they wanted to overthrow Rome. And they said, well, maybe this man Jesus, he's our answer. So when he turned, you know, when he multiplied the bread and the wine, oh, this is the man we need. <laughs> That's right. This this is the man we need. Yeah. Even his disciples, they were wanting an immediate kingdom That's right. right then. But Jesus said, my kingdom is not going to be established by carnal means. <laughs> When the story is related in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, we're all familiar with this story the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. Verse 1, when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, straightway you shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, bring them unto me. If any man say aught unto you, just tell them, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold thy king cometh unto thee. Roman rulers rode their great white steeds. Jesus came in Riding on a donkey. Amen. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and the colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches from the trees. Where did they get this idea that to take garments and lay them down and let this animal walk over them? I think they got that idea from 2 Kings chapter 9 when Jehu was going to make a political purge in Israel. 2 Kings 9 13. Then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs and blew their trumpets saying, Jehu is king. Yeah. I think that's where they got the concept. Whether it was prevalent or not in Israel, yeah. they did that. Mm -hmm. Because Jehu was the man that was going to make this political purge right. in the country. And the people in the New Testament account of the triumphal entry of Jesus, they took these garments, and took branches from the trees, laid them in the way, and the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna. 
The word Hosanna means come and save us now. <laughs> come now. Jesus, we need, we need a man to overthrow Rome. Come right now and overthrow this outfit. But Jesus says, my kingdom's not of this world. It's, it's not a worldly means that I'm going to establish my kingdom. The people were looking for a ready answer. Rome, one of the four kingdoms of that succession that Daniel spoke of. Yeah. Now, Rome came to an end, pagan Rome, then papal Rome. And I don't know how you folks see it, but I've been thinking about this ever since 10th grade in high school. Really, seriously. In the book of Amos, chapter number 9, the Lord told Amos concerning Israel, I am going to overthrow this kingdom. Amen. The political establishment of Israel. I'm going to overthrow it. Amen. But I'm going to save the house of Jacob, the people. Who is true Israel? As I say, if you disagree with me, that's fine. But who is true Israel? It's, the it's not the United States government. It's the people. It's the seed of Abraham. It's the seed of Jacob, Israel. It's not the established political structure. Is there hope for the United States to repent? The answer, my answer, is no. It's not going to repent. And like our pastor said yesterday, Repent for what? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we throw that phrase out based upon 2 Chronicles 7.14 and I'm sure that most people don't even know the concept for the basis of repentance. You repent on the basis of your violation of law. Amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But they never tell us what that law is. They say it's no longer. It doesn't exist anymore. The moral law, the commandments, the structure of government established by God in the, in the uh, judgments and the statutes, well, they're all gone. So what do, you, what do you, if they're gone, then we're not violating anything. That's what's coming across from the pulpits. Amen. So law, God's law, still exists. Amen. His moral law, Amen. his governmental law, his penal laws, yes. his sanitary laws, his dietary laws, right. he never changed his nature Amen. when Jesus died on the cross. Amen. So therefore, we must check the law book Amen. to see where we have gone astray Amen. in order to Amen. find out how do we repent and for what. Amen. Right. And then there's the law of covenant. And that's another subject. 
But national sins demand national judgment. Amen. Now, this talk that I'm giving here, the material on this subject could be two or three hours long, as we all know. Yeah. But in order to make a nation great again, there has to be a purging. Yes. 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 A political, a religious, and racial purging. Amen. Do you know that there are three sins mentioned in the Old Testament? Three national sins that God does not forgive. They demand, they demand harsh judgment. Amen. The first sin when God established his law he said I want you to let your land lay idle every seventh year. Amen. Now going back to the book of Genesis the whole time clock of God is on the schedule of a Sabbath. Yep. But ag, big ag, agricultural industry has violated the land. They violated it starting in the days of Solomon. Amen. For 400, 490 years, and God said, I'll just take all my Sabbaths once. Here you go. God's law of Sabbath, you know, there's the creation Sabbath and the Mosaic Sabbath and so forth. Right. He demands that Sabbath to be observed. And Israel refused to observe that seven-year Sabbath from the days of Solomon all the way up to the Babylonian captivity. And the epitaph on that sin, quote, till there was no remedy. In other words, Israel, you can repent now and it won't do any good. You're still going into the Babylonian captivity. Amen. Amen. In fact, he told Josiah, you're a righteous king and I will forestall, I will delay the judgment until you are dead. But judgment is still coming to Judah. Amen. Because they disobeyed the seven year Sabbath. Yeah. Amen. You could take Monsanto. What are some of the others? Big ones. They have violated, they have raped our land. Yeah. They have raped the soil. Yes. Till there was no remedy. The second one is false gods. Amen. And the, the, the epithet over that sin in 2 Chronicles 34 is, My wrath shall not be quenched. 34.25 And the third sin is aborticide. Oh yeah. The shedding of innocent blood. 
Manasseh the king, he shed innocent blood. He says until he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood. And this is what it says. In 2 Kings 23, 26, it says, quote, The Lord turned not from the fierceness of his wrath. Amen. Unquote. In 24, that is 2 Kings 24, 3 to 4, it says, which the Lord would not pardon. Three sins. National sins. Violation of Sabbath. And there's a weekly Sabbath too, you know. Yes. Well, Walmart comes along and says, we can't, we can't afford to shut down on a, whether it be a Saturday or a Sunday, whatever they choose as a Sabbath. And then the mom and pop stores say, well, we've got to, you know, we can't let Walmart take everything, so we're going to stay open too. Okay. The bottom line is just avaricious greed. Yep. Yeah. The American dream. That's right. I'm sick of yeah. hearing that phrase. Amen. Come on across the border and enjoy the American dream. That's right. And give us the nightmare. That's right. That's right. But you know, there's one sin, national sin, that does not require the wrath of God may seem strange because that sin just results in self-destruction yeah. what we call suicide yeah. we know what that is yes, sir. it's miscegenation yeah. just self-destruct yeah. all it takes is time yeah just time. One generation after another. Yeah. We have an upcoming election. The Christian right is all excited. Yeah. And forgive me if this offends you, but they want to put in they're Barabbas. Yeah. Yeah. True. Drain the swamp. Make America great again. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Amen. As long as two or three things exist. Mm -hmm. These th four sins that I just mentioned plus the bondage of money. Yeah. It's a brutal, brutal master. Yeah. It can be a beneficial servant, yeah. but it's a vicious master. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the Bible says that Esau someday will throw off the yoke yeah. of Jacob from off his neck. How, when, and where did that happen? My opinion is that it, it happened through the banking system. Yes. That is what has, controls kings. Look at Oliver Cromwell. Yeah. He let them in for their money. Unless that's overthrown, America's not going to be great again. Amen. And that's not going to be overthrown except at the coming of our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, what I say today 
is really a burden on my heart and has been for years. And the message that we just heard from our dear brother, excellent. Amen. Great understanding. Amen. It needs to be heralded yes. throughout all of America. Hallelujah. Especially the Christian right. Amen. Because the Christian right are more bent on well how do I say this <laughs> they're more bent on supporting the enemy yes. than the left amen yes, sir. amen because what they see in their candidate is a man that will support the state of Israel yes yep. He's already done three or four things to prove his allegiance yeah. Yeah. to the Edomites. Yeah. Yeah. And if he becomes the next president, I predict that the Christian right will pressure him to rebuild the third temple. Yeah, yeah. And he will do it. Because their goal, you take John Hagee and 700 Club and Daystar and the other Christian networks. Their goal is to get him in office basically to support the Jewish state of Israel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So they're crying for Barabbas yeah. because they see prophecy through the eyes of Schofield yeah. and through the eyes of Darby and through the eyes of Gabeline mm -hmm. and the eyes of Larkin Amen. Yeah. and the eyes of Left Behind Books Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. We want to make America great again by supporting the Jews. That's the way I see it. Yep. Ever since 1900 or thereabouts, Christianity has been dealing with two, a two-headed monster. Yeah. Yeah. It's dispensationalism yes. no. and Zionism. Yeah. Yeah. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Sure do. When I was on, quick story before I close, when I was on television, I gave... I pretty well said what I wanted to say, and I tried to be tactful with it. Oh, yeah. And I gave one message on Christ is all in all. We don't need another temple. We don't need all the other stuff that goes with it. All the Jewish dress and so forth that they're pushing. Yes. So the tape was sent to the big uh, yeah. religious broadcaster in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Lassie Broadcasting. And they wouldn't play it. Because I said, we don't need all that. Christ is our temple. Amen. John chapter 2, destroy this temple. Now rebuild it in three days. That's it. So the owner contacted my representative in Oklahoma. So they contacted me and 
said they want a, you to write a letter as to your position on the state of Israel. So I wrote them a letter. One page. They sent it up there. And their response back to my representative in Oklahoma, they said, well, Pete Summerall read that. And he said, you know, biblically, that preacher is right. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. So the local representative and the representative out of Colorado Springs called up one day said can we come to your house yeah so they stopped by some restaurant some barbecue place I told them to wait a minute hold on uh, we don't eat pork so make sure you get the right stuff there <laughs> so they come to the house super friendly super friendly and they said Pete Summerall said you cannot on his network criticize the Jews of the state of Israel. Well, why did he say that biblically I was right? Amen. And I said, let me tell you my position. Now, I've got two people standing there sitting at my table. They're on my turf. Yeah. Amen. And I told them the story of Israel. Hallelujah. Praise God. I started with Abraham, and I figured, you know, that clock is not going to stop me. Amen. I'm, I'm, a, I'm home. Amen. I told them the whole story. Hallelujah. They looked at me. One of them said, you know, I never heard this before. <laughs> well, you know, a 60-year-old woman been in church for 40 years and never heard this before. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, the, and the man from Colorado Springs he said, that is wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> the problems that we have are the preachers. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. They stand in the door Amen. and they will not let, they will not go through and they won't let anybody else go Amen. through. Yeah. There it is. God is going to overthrow, I believe, God is going to overthrow the religious establishment Amen. in America. Yeah. Amen. It's already beginning to crumble, yes, right. starting in North Texas, yes, good. with all the uh, the preachers that can't stay home. Yeah. I'll put it that way. Yeah. All the scandals. There you go. Let them fall. Yeah. Amen. Let them fall. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to choose Barabbas. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to choose Jesus amen. as my king. Amen. 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 <laughs> Jacob is going to come back and lead us in some songs. Amen. And then Pastor Elmore. Will be. Hallelujah. Glory.